on CNBC TV 18. Now, Pidilite reported an operationally strong set of Q1 numbers with its revenues and net profits beating estimates. Mangalam caught up with Bharat Puri, the MD at Pidilite, began by asking him on how the sentiment shaped up in the first quarter and any trends that they have witnessed so far. Take a look. As far as the first quarter is concerned, we as we've said we've seen it as a continuation actually pretty much now of the last 18 to 24 months post-COVID. We've consistently kept investing back in the marketplace, investing in our brands and obviously expanding into adjacent categories. Uh, the good thing is from a tailwind perspective, clearly construction activity has increased. Real estate uh, clearly is seeing some buoyancy after a long period of time. Consumers have reappraised their own relationship with the home and are spending a lot more time and a lot more money on their homes. And from an internal point of view, I think the good thing has been that we've seen stable input prices return after a long period of time, which enables us to go back and invest back more strongly in the marketplace. So I think it's a combination of all of this. I think the trend really is the domestic market demand remains uh, quite good. Internationally, businesses that are focused on the US and Europe and actually also our neighboring countries, be it a Nepal, be it a Bangladesh, be it a Sri Lanka, are seeing some challenges from a demand perspective. But it's really the domestic business motoring along well, some challenges on the international front. Good stable input prices, so you'd be happy, you know, you keep asking, when will we be back in our stated margin range? You can see we're back in the stated margin range. Now you preempted my next question. Yes, uh, you all are back in your mar stated margin range itself. But I will save that for a bit in, uh, you know, just a bit. Just wanted to know about your um, consumer portfolio itself. Were there parts that did better than the others? I mean, if you could give a little more color on how the portfolio went. See, as far as our portfolio, actually our growth has been pretty much broad-based across the categories and across geographies. The good thing actually has been that we've seen a return of rural demand now for a second quarter in a row. Rural is actually outperforming urban as far as we are concerned. It's growing at one and a half times uh, urban. Both of them are showing good double-digit volume growths, which is really encouraging. For us, you know, you know that we split our business into core growth and pioneer and pretty much Core continues to grow at one to one and a half times GDP growth areas like waterproofing, etc., growing a little faster. And a lot of our pioneer categories are now actually becoming growth categories, be it tile adhesives, be it our joinery business. So a lot of these over time have now acquired scale and uh, therefore are now becoming growth businesses. But overall, I would say from a quarter perspective, there's no great difference in terms of, you know, is it that there are one or two people who scored centuries and the others haven't. Some people have scored a little more, but overall it's been everybody's got a good double-digit uh, basic base. All right, get that. Um, you know, now onto the margins, the 20 to 24 percent brand uh, that you always keep talking about. You guys did around 21.6, 22 percent, right in the middle of that band. Do you think this is what uh, one should look at as uh, a range for the entire year itself? I mean... Gross margins, will they expand further? You will reinvest them back into ad spends. How does that uh, look? I mean, will you be at the lower end actually, of the band, the higher end of the band? Actually, we do see gross margins expanding for, further. Two things will happen. We've always maintained that our focus is profitable volume growth. So we will look at even pricing action, some amount of pricing cuts to make sure that our premium vis-a-vis -vis the rest of the market does not go over what we believe the market can bear. And we will, of course, keep investing in market-facing initiatives, be it advertising, be it more initiatives, uh, both in rural as well as semi-urban markets. That remains an area of focus for us. I mean, just to give you a perspective, we now have over 8,000 pedalite ki dunias in villages with a population of between five and 10,000. You know, you would recall that three years back, this number was 500. Wow. So... Um... In terms of uh, growth vectors going forward, you said that every other paint company is in almost all the categories that you're in as well. You've completed your range by entering into, into the paints business too. But what else would get the delta for you? I mean, is there any sparkling category that we're looking at which you guys are eyeing? Or will it be consistent double-digit volume growth across the portfolio? I'm, I'm just trying to get a sense of what new is Pidilite doing from here? We've actually, you know, for example, 
Three years back, we had a very small tile adhesive business. It's become substantial. So, you know, we've always said that our core businesses will, will grow at one to two times GDP, be it a Fevicol, be it a Fevicquick, be it an MC. Our growth businesses will grow two to four times GDP, be it waterproofing, be it the joinery segment now, be it tile adhesives. And we will keep adding pioneer businesses. And, you know, just to give you a perspective, in the last six months, Mangalam, we have opened seven new manufacturing facilities, absolutely brand new facilities. Four of these are actually for new categories, whether it's epoxy grouts, whether it is uh, actually tile adhesives, and it is also marble and stone glues. So we, as a company, we will keep expanding our range into newer adjacencies. A lot of these are the younger categories of today, which will be the stars of tomorrow. But at an overall level, I think we're in a fairly advantaged sector because from a construction and renovation point of view, we believe this is going to be an area which is going to, over the next three to five years, see higher than average GDP growth simply because of the housing deficit that India has and the investments that are being made both in manufacturing 2.0 and therefore the impact on the rest of the sector. So I would say an advantaged sector. So even, you know, our core categories like Fevicol, for example, we are looking at double-digit growth. Industrial business declined by about 6%. What explained that and uh, what's the guidance on that one? See, really, as far as the industrial business is concerned, it's a tale of really national and international. Wherever we have an exposure to international markets, either directly via exports or we're supplying to customers, be it in wood, you know, in furniture, be it in textiles, be it in leather. They are seeing fairly sluggish demand conditions. And therefore, we've seen that export and export-oriented businesses are the ones that are suffering. Domestic B2B businesses are actually doing well. You know, the projects businesses are doing well. The investment in infrastructure is coming and we're seeing buoyancy there. So at an overall level, we believe the situation going forward will take, in our estimate, anywhere between three to six months before we see a little better demand conditions. But fortunately for us, the domestic market remains, you know, far larger and the largest share of the pie. So we hope to make sure that we keep motoring along as far as the domestic market is concerned. A lot of the neighboring markets, like whether it's a Nepal, whether it's a Bangladesh, whether it's a Sri Lanka, we will see gradual improvement in these, I think, in the next three months itself. Okay, so that's the management of Fiddy Light, but we do have the Zydus Life numbers on your screen. It seems as though it is better than expectations in terms of revenue as well as EBITDA. It seems as though uh, a lot of the companies which have been selling the cancer drug Revlimid generic have particularly benefited this quarter. But remember that there has been base business improvement in major markets such as the US when it comes to price pressure. So that's probably aided in terms of sales as well. Net profit is much better than expectations. Um, or rather, it is quite a significant growth on a year-on-year -year basis. We'll break down the numbers and see what the geographies look like, especially the US as well as the India performance for Zydus Life, which would be majority of sales for them. We'll take a short break. On the other end, we'll continue our focus on the pharmaceutical space. We have Mr. Tambe, who's the MD and CEO of Biocon Biologics, who will be joining in to discuss.